Oh, London Bridge, iconic. The central artery of London for over two millennia. There's just simply no mistaking it. It is a- uh, Andrew, Andrew, that's not London Bridge. No, it, it, it is. It is London Bridge. It, it's definitely, definitely not. It's not. I, I did my research. Okay, I typed London Bridge into Google, and it returns several pictures of this bridge. This is London Bridge. No, that's Tower Bridge. This is London Bridge. You mean it's been a bridge here since the days of Emperor Nero, and our modern response to that legacy is this? Yes. Wow. Alright guys, it's time to go chronological on this because the scale of the history is about as good as it gets for this city. You see, there's been a bridge on this site since around 50 AD. That's 50 flipping AD. At around the same time that the Romans established Londinium across the river. And they put Londinium over there, in fact they put the bridge here because geographically this is just a jolly good place to cross the river. For the first several centuries of this new millennium, bridges got constructed and knocked down more often than I can be bothered reading about, although special mention to the London tornado of 1091 for giving us the most unexpected reason for a bridge's structure to be torn asunder, as well as keeping me up at night now every time it gets a little bit windy outside. It starts to get interesting in 1209 when old London Bridge is built, a structure that would go on to survive for over six centuries. And when you look back over the history, it was just anarchy from day one. It had 19 arches, all of different shapes and sizes. They let anyone build whatever they wanted to on top of the bridge so that it became so crowded at one point that it would take an hour to cross from side to side during rush hour. Oh, London traffic, eh? Hey? <laughs> And during its lifetime, most of it had to be rebuilt after different parts of it had fallen into the Thames. Speaking of things falling into the Thames, there were several public bathrooms on the bridge which discharged directly into the river below, much to the annoyance of local sailors. But if that wasn't enough to put you off driving underneath the thing, because of the narrow gaps through which water could flow underneath the bridge, as well as four huge water wheels they installed under the arches, the height difference of the water on either side could be as much as two metres. So at certain times of day, it would be basically suicidal to try and navigate a boat down this makeshift rapids course. That's if you could sail at all. Now the speed of the river was slowed so much much by the bridge's hefty presence that upstream it would freeze in winter and stopped anyone from sailing their ferries across. Ever opportunistic carnival folk realised this was essentially free, unregulated land and quickly set up frost fairs on the ice to make a quick buck. It was... It was dangerous up on the top too though. Oh my god. Obnoxious. It was dangerous up top too. In its third year, a fire broke out on the south side of the bridge. People rushed from the north side to their aid where promptly a second fire started from the drifting ashes of the first. Quick thinking Londoners sailed their boats underneath the middle of the bridge where people started jumping off. But unfortunately those boats started to sink under the weight of all the people they were trying to save. 3,000 people died. And stepping off the bridge, there's even more death in the air. Around here was the southern gatehouse of the bridge and this is where you could find London's number one thing to do on Medieval TripAdvisor. Come here and see the heads of traitors on pikes, sometimes dozens of them at a time. People like the true Scottish hero William Wallace or maybe Guy Fawkes. The record's not particularly clear on that one. Less well informed tour guides will try to tell you that this spike sculpture, which sits roughly where the southern gatehouse used to be, commemorates that grisly tradition. But unfortunately the architects themselves have said that that's not what it's doing. They think that it's pointing at the base of St Magnus the Martyr's Church, which has long stood at the entrance to London Bridge. But unfortunately it's the entrance to London Bridge on the other side of the river, so... Not really sure. It's not even that nice. There are remains of this bridge kicking around, although all of them are from later alterations to the original structure, like this stone alcove a few hundred yards away in Guy's Hospital. There's a few of these around, but I visited this one because the alternative would have been going to Bethnal Green, and nobody wants that. I also took issue with the date they've given the alcove on their site. It's absolutely not from 1176. 
And remember that church the needle doesn't point at? Well, St Magdalene the Martyr is a building that used to be right at the edge of the medieval crossing, and in 1762, as part of improvement works, they gutted its tower like a fish to carve out a pedestrian entrance onto the bridge, which today you can still saunter through. These stones look like they've just been left here after coming off the church roof in a storm or perhaps a tornado of some sort, but they actually form part of Old London Bridge. They made up part of its northernmost arch. Anyway, in 1831 they'd had quite enough of Old London Bridge and they replaced it with a far more sensible Victorian one, often referred to as New London Bridge. Which every day thousands of people sit on the remnants of without realising it. This bridge was notable only for the well-known story about how it got sold to an American called Robert McCulloch and currently resides in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, where weirdly you can check in on how it's getting on anytime you like via a webcam on the city's website. And before I say any comments to this effect, as far as we know, he knew he was buying London Bridge and he wasn't fooled into thinking he was buying this one. What's this one called again? Oh, for God's sake. This is Tower Bridge. Never heard of it. And in an oh what could have been moment, let's also for a second appreciate the bridge Thomas Telford proposed instead of that boring stone one, a grand iron structure which I think would still be pretty spectacular today. <sighs> you know me though, I never miss a chance to check out the local hot train action and it's no secret that I'm a big fan of the new London Bridge station. I just really like it. But there's not a lot of juicy hidden history here. What I will say is that there have been several iterations of the station. It's continuously being reshaped and expanded just like what's happened over the last couple of years and technically opening in 1836 it is the oldest railway terminus still around in London. The actual oldest being the closed and now basically unheard of Spa Road station just behind me here in Bermondsey. More juicy is that London Bridge has played host to London's first ever tube railway. Now, a little bit further north, the Metropolitan Railway is being built using the cut and cover method where they would cut the road up, dig a hole, build a railway in it and then infill on top. But down here in 1890, the city and South London Railway is boring a tube tunnel directly through the earth, starting at Stockwell. Which at the time looked a lot more like this, the very well preserved Kennington station, before the line moved up to Elephant and Castle, Borough and eventually coming under the Thames basically where I'm standing here and ending up here at King William Street just next to the monument. Now those tunnels were enlarged and now form part of the northern line uh, but the terminus here was considered to be too awkwardly positioned to ever work as a modern day station and has been bypassed the next station now being Bank. And sadly there's nothing left of the surface entrance which is on this corner and the platforms have been destroyed whilst being turned first into a bomb shelter and now into a construction site helping out with improvement works at Bank Station. This plaque being the only clue that it was ever here. And that's kind of it for London Bridge. You know we've talked about the for God's sake. And that's kind of it for London Bridge. Oh, We've... Hang on, hang on. You spent basically the whole time talking about a thing that's not even there anymore. That's not exploring London Bridge. What about the stuff around the station, the market? The... You, you've got to say something for next time, don't you? Ugh. Bye.